I'm only asking you to hold the fort for a day or two. But I must say, it's very short notice, Rita. Well, I thought you'd be pleased. You can walk round acting as if you own the place. Swap all the sweetie jars round. I did that last week. Have you not noticed? It's now A for aniseed twist, the right through to T for treacle toffee. Oh, uh, yeah. that... You'll have a field day. No, I won't, Rita, I won't. I mean, I can't even take a comfort break without shutting the shop. And anyway, what exactly is the matter with you? You don't sound very poorly to me. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Dr Cole. Have I to get a sick note? I've got a tummy bug. Well, I normally soldier on when it's just a minor ailment. Ah, well, there you are, you see. You're made of sterner stuff than me. That's why I know the business will be in good hands when I finally let go. Yes, well, if you're not better after the weekend, we're going to have to hire somebody. Deal. Guilty about keeping you off work. I'm not leaving you here on your own. Come look after myself. I don't doubt it. But you'll be rifling through my jewellery box the minute my back's turned. I would never do that, I promise you. Oh, well, just in case you are tempted, anything of any value was moved after the fifth time I was burgled. You've been burgled five times? Terrible, isn't it? You can't trust anybody these days, especially you. I wouldn't nick stuff off an old woman. Oh, you're a specialist con merchant, are you? Just men you extract money from. Look, I feel lousy about what I did to Fred. So bad you decided to give up your criminal ways and work for a living, like the rest of us. You say what you like, but I'm a grafter. I've worked the market since I was 14. So you con Fred for a bit of pocket money? Some bad stuff. I know that. Yes, and I intend to keep reminding you of that fact. I may be a soft touch when it comes to putting you up, but that doesn't mean you'll have an easy time of it while you're here. Understand? Yeah. Good. And do as I tell you. Keep your hands where I can see them, and we'll get along just fine. I know you won't believe me, but apart from the Thai bride thing, I've never done anything else illegal in my life. There's no point talking to you, is there? We'll get very bored if you don't. But anything you do say may be taken down and used in evidence against you. It was just too easy to resist, pretending to be Thai, which is so daft, and picking up eight grand, knowing no one was going to get hurt. You think no one got hurt? I mean, it didn't seem like a real crime. It was like the whole thing were a practical joke. I don't think Fred were laughing when he found out. I know. Or any of your other victims. How many of them were there? A few. All sad, lonely men with more money than sense. I just didn't think about it. Dennis, who set it all up, he... he made it sound harmless. Yes. I know I did wrong, and I'm paying the price. And some people will say you're getting your just desserts. That's what I kept thinking when I woke up scared last night, wondering, where the hell am I? Little voice in my head saying, you're right where you deserve to be, Stacey. You don't deserve to be knocked about by a thug. No woman deserves that. That's the nicest thing you've said to me all day. Yes, and I bet you've had a few other knocks in your life as well. No more than a lot of women. Me included. That's no excuse for what you did. I know. So do something about it. Change. Get your life straight. Do something useful with your life while you're still young enough. I managed to. I brought a couple of pieces of sirloin. I, I seem to remember you were very partial to sirloin. Fred, can you sit down a minute? There's, um, there's something I want to say to you. Oh, I. Do you want to talk in private? No, I, uh, I don't mind you hearing it. I want you to hear it. Oh, right. I just want to say how sorry I am for what I did to you. For what me and Dennis did to you. Now, don't let's drag up the past. But I want to drag it up, Fred. What I did were mean and nasty. And no one deserves to be treated like that, especially not someone as kind and warm hearted as you. See? Orchid. Please don't call me Orchid, Fred. She doesn't exist. She never did. No. Hearing that name, it. 
It just reminds me of all the terrible things I've done. Of the terrible person that I am. You're not a terrible person. I don't deserve your sympathy. Or Rita's, but you've both given it to me. And I feel dead humble. So thank you. Gonna need a new door. Well, you will make sure it's a sturdy one, won't you? Of course. Tell Rita she won't have to worry about some thieving little scrape getting in by the time I finish with it. Yes, well, I might just rephrase that. She want me to get her some prices? Oh, she's in no fit state to worry about that. Mind you, if you even so much as think of ripping her off... Norris, chill! She is a neighbour and she's an old lady, and despite what you may have heard, I don't take advantage. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that, that was a churlish. It, it's also extremely distressing. Oh, I, I don't suppose anybody in your house heard anything, did they? I'm looking for Mrs Sullivan. Are you it? Are you the entire response of the police force, one woman? Have you seen what this maniac's done? It's even worse inside. Are you Mr Sullivan? No, 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 I, I, I'm a partner. Well, well, what I mean is a business partner. Where can I find Mrs Sullivan? Upstairs, in the flat, scared out of her wits. Look, I have tried to start a neighbourhood watch scheme, but people just don't care enough. Maybe now they will. <laughs> the police are there. She's going to tell them, isn't she? If she were... She'd have told them last night when they first came. Any road, she gave you a word. She must hate me. You both must bring in all this to your door. Nay, nee, nobody's blaming you. It's time we thought about what we're going to do next. You want me to go, don't you? I'm saying, if it were that thug Stuart that did that to the flat... Oh, you know it was. He's letting you know he's around. You're no safer here than you were at Rita's. You do want me to go. You really think I'd kick you out into the street? Have you no friends you can go to, away from Manchester? Nobody. That's why I came to you. Then you shall stay by my side until this thing's sorted. This little shot for you coming home to this. Have you any idea who could have... Well... Burglars, I suppose. But nothing's been taken. It's hard to tell at this stage, but uh, I don't think so, no. Maybe they got frightened off. I don't wish to alarm you, Mrs Sullivan, but well, what about someone with a grudge against you? Is that possible? <sighs> you know, enemies? I'm a news agent. I have words with people when they don't pay the paper bill. Or... Kids pinching sweets. And you've not seen anyone hanging round or causing trouble in the shop? No. Sorry, I can't help you. Well, if anything does happen or you have any further thoughts, you know where I am. Yeah, of course. Must have been very unsettling for you. As long as you get a decent lock on that door, I'd say you were pretty secure in here. But if you are worried, call. Don't think you're wasting our time. Oh. Better be safe than sorry, eh? It's all right. I made sure he won't hang in about before I come here. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I just don't want anything else to happen to you. No, neither do I. How are you? How do you think I am? I've had my home wrecked, the fear of God put into me. So many things, things that meant a lot to me, smashed beyond repair. If I'd have thought for a minute that that... And what's was... worse, I've been lying to my friends. Friends that really care about me. Never mind police. I'm sorry. I never thought he'd find me. Well, he has. And if he can find you in my flat, you're no safer here. Fred's going to stay with me. And put himself in harm's way? Oh, I'm sorry, Stacey. No, we've no choice. We've got to go to the police and tell them everything. But you know what'll happen to me? Look, the only way to end this is to get that man locked up before somebody does get hurt. She's right, Stacey, love. Look, if we all go and see them together, me and Fred can back you up. You do realise this lot might think I've been wasting their time this morning. You don't have to stay. Yes, we do. They'll understand. I do hope so. I spent a night in the cells not too long back just for speaking my mind to a magistrate. 
They might think lying to police is a damn sight more serious. Mrs Sullivan, want to come through? It's too late to worry now. Soon be sorted. She's worried about one night in the cells. I'll be getting a lot more than that. Nay. Me and Rita will vouch for you. We'll count for some will that? And when they ask how you and me know each other, find out I conjured before, they'll think I've sweet taught you again. Now do we know what Rita's really saying in there? See, get them ideas out of your head. You saw what Stuart did to a flat. Why would she want to protect me if that's what she gets for her trouble? What he did will make the bobbies understand why you're frightened. A misunderstanding you over a bit of... You get it, do you? To them, I'm just a gold-digging tie bride. They'll not listen. I know you mean well. Oh, flaming hell. Stacy! Explain, Rita. There's no need. I know exactly what happened. Did the poor lass lost her nerve? No. She twisted you round her little finger, just like she did before. She were in tears. A pretty face and a sob story. You're anybody's. When are you going to get wise to it? But if she goes to Bobby, she'll be in danger. Oh, so it's all right for me to be in danger, as long as she's OK. Just wish I'd never let you drag me into this. I'm sorry. Oh, so you're there now, are you? Well, if you are sorry, you'll go to the police this minute and tell them what you know. I'm scared. I'm full of the joys of spring. I don't feel safe in my own flat anymore because of you. Cause nothing but problems. Oh, don't stand there feeling sorry for yourself, even if you mean it, which I doubt. I do. I put my neck on the line for you, lady. And am I paying for it now? I know. Then do something about it! How is everything, Rita? Oh, not too bad, Emily, thanks. Do the police have any idea who did it? Not a clue. Oh, I'm so sorry. Still, if you're not letting it get to you, that's something. Save one once that's happened. <laughs> Rita? <laughs> I don't think I can stand much more of this, Evelyn. Oh, Rita. <laughs> it's driving me mad. Come on. Let's get you home. I wish I had an all, Emily. You might have been able to talk some sense into me. I've been as bad as Fred believing her tales of war. Sounds like her chickens have come home to roost. And who's picking up the tab? Hawkins. I've gone back to how I was with Alan, living in fear for my life. He won't come back now she's with Fred. Does he know that, though? But surely the police can do something. Oh, they tell you how to make your home more secure, and that's it. They can't post a bobby outside. They haven't got the men. They have panic buttons or something they can install. If you have repeated breaking. I don't think I could stand another one, Emily, let alone four or five. They'll catch him. Not if she won't go to police. Well, then Fred will have to make her. Do you know, I've always felt safe in here. We've had break-ins before, but they've always been one-ups. Well, so will this one be. If you can't feel safe in your own home, where can you? You've had a strong new front Till the door was strong enough, Emily he got through that. <laughs> what am I going to do? Oh. Wait. <laughs> well, I can't see anyone getting through that lot in a hurry. Well, let's hope not. Rita, oh, I've heard about the breaking. Are you all right? I felt better. Do they know who did it? Not a clue. What did they take? Nothing. Just trashed it. Just so it'll be fine. Do you know, I'd bang them up and throw away the key. I really would. Is there anything I can do? Well, there is one thing. Uh, my bell doesn't seem to be working. I I've asked this chap here, but he's two other jobs to go to. Yeah, I'll fix that for you. Really? I'll uh, get my tools from the van. We might have to knock that drink on the head. Oh, not on my account. Hey, don't be silly. It's fine. Back in a minute. <sighs> oh, that was really nice of him. He's a very nice man. Landed on your feet there, Eileen. Hello. Uh, have you got a moment, Fred? Can you wait, Emily? I'm afraid it can't. I have a lot of my plate at the moment. Yeah, so has Rita. Thanks to you. Why, what's she been saying? 
She's at her wit's end over what's happened. Well, I'm doing it best to sort things out. I mean, I've, I've got her a new front door with we'll locks to put on it, and that, uh, that Stuart character will soon have him behind bars. Oh, they'd be worried about nothing. Do you have any idea what you've unleashed, Fred? Thanks to your blundering attempt to play the White Knight with some cheap condman, I'm not sure Rita will ever be the same again. No one. I say, no one worries more about her than me. I thought she was one of your oldest friends. She is. Then you have a strange way of showing it. The whole Alan Bradley nightmare has come back to haunt her, and it's entirely because of you. What else can I do, Emily? It's a very good question. You couldn't have opened a worse can of worms if you'd tried. Now, the enemy have got some serious talking to do. I can't believe all this trouble I've caused. It's what we're doing now that's important. You heard what Rita said. Bobbies won't take her seriously unless you talk to him. It's not that I don't want to go. Then what's the problem? I told you, I'll get into trouble with them and Stuart. Well, you've got to do somewhat. You can't stop here forever. Our Ashley and Clara are coming back tomorrow, don't forget. But where do I go? Well, there must be somewhere. You can't run forever. It's bound to catch up with you and then. See, eat your tea, there's a good lass. You've been so good to me, Fred. I don't know about good. I've done the best for you. I know that. You've done more than you'll ever know. I'm a better person for knowing you. How'd you make that out? That's where I've been going wrong, not having the right kind of man around, the, the right influence. Things could have been so different. What are you saying, Stacey? Now, I've come to respect you for the good man you are. In fact, it's more than respect. It'd be a shame to throw all that away, wouldn't it? Especially if I could give you the love you're looking for. I could give you everything you wanted, like before. Only this time it'd be for real. Would you like that, Fred? It could be good together. You want someone who'll care for you, look after you, be there for when you want. I could give you everything you were looking for when you fell for Orchid. I could even be Orchid if you wanted. <sighs> You could con the devil himself if you set your mind to it. What? After all what's happened, you're still trying to lie your way out of it. But I thought you wanted me. You wreck folks' lives. You screw money out of them. Not anymore. You're still the nasty piece of work you all us were. We could be good together. We could? Yes. Till you got enough money out of me to run off with. I mean it, honest. Honest! Rita Sullivan's honest! One of my oldest friends, and between the pair of us, we've nigh on pushing over the edge. I want you out of here tomorrow. And I don't care what happens to you. No, Fred. Just you thank your lucky stars I'm not kicking you out tonight. You're still here, I see. I've nowhere to go, you know that. That's now to do with me. I'm scared I'll walk straight into Stuart. If you'd any now, she'd walk straight into a police station. He'll track me down wherever I go. This is the only place I'm safe. So you want to drag me whole family into your grubby little world, do you? I mean with you. I'm safe with you. That's what I was trying to say last night. I know how it must have sounded. But I wasn't trying to trick you. I do have feelings for you, Fred. Special feelings. How could I not after everything you've done for me? It's the truth, Fred, the God's honest truth. Please don't turn your back on me, I beg you. If you're not out by this dinner time, I'm calling the police. Can you go at Cropidus? Ah, past three. Uh, look at him, he's been standing there 15 minutes. Well, so what? He's browsing. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a news agent's, not a public library. Uh, I can't find what I'm looking for. Well, ask me and I'll tell you if we've got it. Don't be so rude. 
You treat the kids that pile in here after school with more respect. Sound fi. It's a specialist magazine. Oh, I know what it is. A second shelf down, a third from the left. <sighs> yes, Fred. Can I have a quick word in private? Come through. Three pounds, please. I just thought you might like to know that I've given Stacey her marching orders. Not before time, either. She's back in her bags, even as we speak. Where will she go? I don't know, and I don't care. And that's the attitude I should have taken from start. Oh, you were doing what you thought were right. And endangering a dear friend. What were I thinking? Yes. Anyway, no harm done. No real harm. The main thing is, she's out of both our lives. Hello. Back again. Hey! What do you think you're playing at? How dare you... <gasps> I don't want any trouble. Just tell me where Stacy is. Stu. I told you. Stacy's gone. I don't know where she is. Liar. No, it's the truth. Now get out of my shop. I don't know why you're protecting her. She's not worth it. Then why are you doing this? Why don't you let her go instead of hounding her and me and getting yourself in trouble with police? This is breaking and entering, you know. Me and Stacy have unfinished business. Yeah, I can imagine what that involves. I love that girl. And she used me. She conned me. Well, she, she did the same to a friend of mine. I'm not sticking up for her. So why'd you put a roof over her head? Because, why did you hide her? Because, because I was put in a difficult position. You're in league with her, aren't you? No, 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 no. I don't want this to turn nasty, but it will if you don't tell me where she is. Well, I've stood up to bigger bullies than you in my time. Stop. Rich, I in there. It's Stuart! Oh, look! Oh. Open this door! I'm going to call the police. You might, Rick. Police. Stuart's got Rita locked in cabin. He's what? Yeah, it's an emergency. Rita! Let me try. Stuart, it's me. I'm outside. Thought you could get away from me, did you? Thought I'd let you just walk away. You've laid a finger on Rita. You're coming with me. Take your hands off her. Who do you think you are? No, oh, it makes you feel big, does it? Hey? Uh, pushing women around. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hold him down? Police are on the way. Are you all right, love? Rita! Oh, thank God you're all right. Thank you, Fred. Do you fancy a drop of brandy in it? No, this is fine, thank are you. Are you sure? I can easily pop over the road. Tea's fine, thank you. Well, I've carted him off, so he's safe to go outside now. Thank you, Nathan. That were a timely intervention. Well, I'd best be on my way. Oh, well, uh, could I grab one of these, please, Rita? Oh, yeah, please take it with my compliments and thank you. And there'll be a free drink or two at the Rover, should you chance by. Great. Thanks a lot. See ya. I've said I'll go to the station and make a statement. A very long one. Now, see, th there's no point dragging up the past. Bye, Fred. Goodbye, Stacey. I'm sorry for everything. Truly, I am. Bye, Rita. Whatever happens, don't drift back into your old ways. Start afresh. Fred. Fred, help mm. me get rest of these up, will you? And then we could get the shop open again. I don't think that's why, Rita, look. He knocked a few bars of chocolates over, that's all. He scared you out of your wits. He scared me. I say, he scared me. You're shaking like a leaf. Look at you. Some of these are shop soiled. Never mind the shop, Rita. You, you've had a terrible ordeal. I'll mark them down half price. I'll mark them half price. <laughs>